Hi, good afternoon. Good May afternoon. from Channel News Asia. Prime Minister, you outlined all these major issues which you wanted Singaporeans to refocus their attention on. Yes. But is this uh, also a concern, perhaps, that Alginate GRC might be taking away the, the real focus on issues that might be cause of distraction for voters? And how concerned are you that the voters across Singapore right now perhaps might be casting their votes for Alginate GRC, even if they don't live in Alginate uh, GRC? My second question to you um, is... In the last election in 2006, you mentioned that you wanted a strong mandate from Singaporeans because it was your first election as Prime Minister. What is your call this time around? Final question for you. Senior Minister Go earlier mentioned that this is the round two in terms of hustings and now the turn is to put the opposition on their defensive. Can you elaborate a little bit about that? And also, does this mean that gloves are off and it's full steam ahead? Thank you. <laughs> You are mixing your metaphors. <laughs> First of all, I think I'll donate this a tough fight. Uh, I visited them this morning. Giorgio and his team are in good spirits and are uh, going all out to win the support of the voters there. Uh, I think that uh, they will do well. Um, the rest of the constituencies are in a different situation. There might be some, they might be watching what's happening with one another's wards. Uh, maybe there's some effect. But I think each constituency is different. The, the, the teams are different, the issues are different, or, or rather the teams are different, the situations are different, and we will have to see when the results come out what the pattern is. Uh, in every election we try to go for a strong mandate. In the first election, all the more it's important to push for one. But I'm, I would like to ask Singaporeans for as strong a mandate as possible this time too. Not for me personally, but so that the team can have a mandate to do work for Singaporeans and serve them well. I don't have a... You will next ask me what the number is. I do not speculate the numbers, but we would like every Singaporean to consider the vote carefully and if they think that we can serve them well, to give us that vote. Uh, as Sam says, this is round two. Yes, it is the middle of the campaign. Uh, I think the campaign is going on vigorously. I didn't know that we were wearing gloves in the beginning. Yeah, Moi Hong. Mike, Mike. Moi Hong from the straight side. Um, when, when we came in um, this afternoon, we noticed that the security was uh, much uh, tougher, much tighter um, than last week. And uh, of course, um, overnight we heard the news uh, from the US about um, the death of Osama bin Laden. So I would like to ask you, PM, um, do events in Pakistan have any bearing on the GE in Singapore? I don't know about the security in this building. I didn't, whether it's connected to Osama bin Laden or not. But I think it's a good thing for the world that uh, Osama bin Laden is dead. Uh, it makes the world a little bit a safer place, a little bit safer a place although it still remains a pretty dangerous world. Because Osama bin Laden may be dead, but Al-Qaeda exists. Its franchises operate all over the world, including in Southeast Asia, including in Indonesia, their affiliates. And uh, from time to time, they look at Singapore, and you have seen that they've got MRT maps marked out which, uh, with targets of interest. So I think that it is a backdrop to our election, a reminder to us that while we... Uh, engage in all this uh, introspection and, uh, and uh, political battles in Singapore, that it's a world where there are threats which are bigger than us and which we must not take our eyes off because if we do, then something untoward could easily happen to us. I mean, you, I, you, 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 Osama bin Laden is dead, but a few weeks ago the or one week ago, the uh, Indonesians found three big bombs near a church, and somebody blew himself up in a in a mosque in the police headquarters to try and hit the police chief. And in in, in and in KL, uh, they found some hand grenades in the hotel room. Hey, this is just uh, uh, within a few hundred kilometers, our nearest neighbors. So I think that. Uh, we are safe in Singapore, but we must keep, take our precautions. Yes? Hi, Kenny from my people. This is just a follow-up question. Um, are there concerns that terrorist groups in the region could uh, retaliate to uh, countries that 
are allies of the U.S. and Singapore could be in some danger. Thanks. Well, it could happen. I have no specific intelligence, but it could happen. I mean, I'm sure the terrorist groups cannot be pleased that uh, Osama, bin, Osama bin Laden has been not is not just dead but killed by the Americans, and they will be thinking what they can do, whether they have the capabilities to mount. Well, we'll have to see. But we are not taking any chances. Can't say you understand anything. I think most of the time people take Singapore security for granted, and even events far away, they also think that they happen far away and will not affect Singapore. But for security agencies, we cannot take that view. We cannot. In normal times too, of course we cannot be on tender hooks all the time. But in normal times too, we must always be vigilant. And we repeatedly also ask the public to play the role and be vigilant against any suspicious persons or objects. Report to the police, and when they do so, at least you have the police to look into it, and we can then feel safer that well, there's somebody attending to the problems that we have raised. So we have not been hit; we have been lucky so far, but we cannot take the view forever. You know, we cannot be complacent. In other words, we must always be ready, just in case, in the unfortunate event that somebody managed to slip through, and we get hit, and it can really affect Singaporeans. A lot. So while while we can feel very safe here, and uh, we don't want to live in that climate of fear all the time over our sense of safety, but at the same time we must be conscious and fully aware of the threat that we can face. Yeah. We get from today, uh, Prime Minister. I think there were some issues raised by uh, Mr. Kenneth Jayaratnam ah. during the Reform Party uh, rally about the letter that was mm. sent, the condolences mm. letter that was sent. Yeah. Can we get your response on that? And also, if I may, a second question on ministerial salaries. Mm. Uh, SDP has raised it uh, quite frequently during its hustings. Um, is there a way to forge a stronger link between the people and uh, the government in that sense in understanding? This ministerial uh, salaries. Well, first of all, on Kenneth Jaratnam and what he said, we, he he said that when I wrote him a condolence letter because Mr. J. B. Jaratnam died, I ended up by saying, therefore, Mr. J. B. Jaratnam had to be destroyed because he was against the system. It's totally untrue. He made it up. I d looked up the letter just to be sure, and I gave it to today. Today has printed it. And what I said in my letter was to that Mr. J.B. Jaratnam was an MP for Anson constituency and then an NCMP. He used to engage in heated debates in the House. Perhaps it was because he and the PAP never saw eye to eye on any major political issue, and he sought by all means to demolish the PAP and our system of government. Unfortunately, this helped neither to build up a constructive opposition nor our parliamentary tradition. Nevertheless, one had to respect Mr. J.B. Jayaratnam's dogged tenacity to be active in politics at his age, which I don't think in any way verifies what Mr. Kenneth Jayaratnam said, so I can't understand why he said it. Uh, as for salaries, this is something which we have debated many times over, over the years. Uh, we have not recently made any changes. Uh, the last time we made changes was in like, 2007, uh, we had three days of parliamentary debate, full debate. I spoke, Dio Chi Hen spoke, several of the other ministers as well. And I think Lo Tia Kiang spoke and uh, Sylvia Lim. So there was a full airing of the issues and an explanation of why we think that this is the honest, sound system which will enable Singapore to have the best team of not just ministers but judges, civil servants, SAF officers, all the public sector, people paid properly so that you can have the best people to do a good job in accordance with the responsibility you give them and in accordance with the qu quality of the persons you are looking for for those jobs. Um, none of those arguments get rehearsed in rallies. When it comes to rallies, you just throw big numbers around and uh, excite envy and dis disaffection. But I suppose that's the nature of the election campaign. I think we have to try and explain this again and again during 
times when temperature is not so high, why it is necessary, why this is the right thing to do, and to get Singaporeans to accept this, and to judge by the results. I mean, you, you may argue over the numbers, whether it should be bigger, bigger or smaller, but look at the result for Singapore. It's delivered a government which has overall, I think, served Singapore competently and well. And compared to other countries, we haven't done badly. Yes. Yeah, go behind. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, um, Elgin from The Straits Times. Um, some of the opposition parties have been saying at rallies that um, giving the PAP a strong mandate um, at, at the May 7 polls is um, sending a message that... Uh, that they're happy with PAP policies and this might result in them not being consulted in the future because uh, the PAP feels that it has a strong mandate. And uh, could you give voters a sense of what is at, st at stake here? So in the worst case scenario, uh, if the PAP is returned to power with a much weaker mandate in terms of vote share... No, in the worst case scenario, the PAP has five seats in parliament. Okay, in a in in a in a not so good scenario, <laughs> in which the in which the PAP is returned to power with a with a with a lo, with a much lower vote share, what does it no, mean I, for I Singapore No, I do not politics? want to speculate on all that. I think we fight to do the best we can in all of the constituencies. I do not say that all of them are easy fights, but we try to fight the best we can in all of the constituencies. And we ask voters: if you think your MP is serving you well support him. If you think that somebody else can serve you better, by all means vote for somebody else. The outcome is a solemn result of the elections and we will have to take it from there. You have seen other countries where there have been sudden changes in government. Sometimes it's for the better, sometimes it's for the worse. I do not imagine in Singapore if there's a sudden drastic change like that, it would be for the better. I think that you want a government which has a strong mandate, but at the same time is acutely aware that, as I have explained, as I have stated it, that they are servants and not masters, that they are accountable to the people, that their duty is to do good for Singapore, and it's their responsibility not only to look after uh, immediate concerns of voters, but also to look after the long-term interests of the voters and their children. And I think that's the kind of government which we would like to be able to come out with from this election. And I think if, we can have, if I can have my team home safely, then I have a team which will look after us, look after Singapore for the next 10 years, and I have a nucleus, I have a group, which over the next 10 years can build up and be ready to look after Singapore for at least another 10 years beyond that. And I think that would be a great good thing for Singapore. Yes? 